Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, join my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will discuss the relationship between kinetic energy, mass, and speed, and the relationship between potential energy, mass, gravity, and height of an object. So, so let's, let's do, do this. Our learning target for today is, I can analyze and interpret data to create graphical displays that illustrate the relationships of kinetic energy to mass and speed and potential energy to mass and height of an object. In today's video, we will analyze four relationships including kinetic energy versus mass, kinetic energy versus speed, potential energy versus mass, and potential energy versus height. And as a bonus, we're going to do potential energy with gravity, mass, and height. Before we go into graphical analysis though, let's first briefly talk about the similarities and differences between potential energy and kinetic energy. In the simplest terms, energy is the ability to do work, which is when a force is applied to an object and it moves. Both potential energy and kinetic energy have the ability to do work. Potential energy is a form of energy that has the potential to do work, but is not actively doing work or applying any force on any other objects. Potential energy of an object is found in its position, not its motion. It is the energy of position. Potential energy is released by an elastic rebound like a rubber band, for example, gravity, or chemical reactions. This is best demonstrated in an object like an archer's bow, which stores the energy that is created from pulling back the bowstring. The potential energy stored in the pullback is responsible for the energy that occurs upon release, which is known as kinetic energy. Also, think about the potential energy of the food we eat. The energy is not in motion, but when we eat food, our digestive system breaks down the chemical bonds in it, which releases energy which we need for our bodies to function and move. Question, does potential energy always turn into kinetic energy? Pause the video and take two minutes to think, pair, and share out your responses. Understanding kinetic energy is easier because it's more obvious that moving things have energy. Kinetic energy is created when potential energy is released, forced into motion by gravity or elastic forces and other ways that cause objects to move. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. When work is done on an object and it accelerates, it increases the kinetic energy of an object. The most important factors that determine kinetic energy is the motion measured as velocity and the mass of the object in question. With that being said, let's take a look at the relationship between kinetic energy and mass. Let's analyze the following diagram to demonstrate the relationship between kinetic energy and mass. Mass is measured in kilograms on the x-axis and kinetic energy is measured in joules on the y-axis. If you notice, the first mass point starts at 2 kilograms and the first kinetic energy point starts at 4 joules. If we continue to go from left to your right, you'll notice that as mass increases, so does kinetic energy. So basically, the relationship is as mass increases, kinetic energy increases, which is a direct relationship. This will be the same going in reverse. As mass decreases, kinetic energy decreases as well. Let's take a look at the relationship between kinetic energy and speed. In this diagram, velocity is measured in kilometers per hour on the x-axis, and kinetic energy is measured in kilojoules on the y-axis. Also, the mass is measured as well. Now let's look at the relationship between kinetic energy, speed, and mass. If you notice, as speed or velocity increases, so does kinetic energy. If we take a closer look, mass plays a factor in this as well. Look at the car or blue line with a mass of 500 kilograms at 100 kilometers per hour. It has a kinetic energy of 200 kilojoules. Now let's take a look at the car or the green line with a mass of 3,000 kilograms at 100 kilometers per hour. It has a kinetic energy of 1200 kilojoules. So if they're going the same speed or velocity, why is there such a major difference in their kinetic energy? This graph demonstrates the relationship between all three factors by showing that the greater the velocity and the greater the mass, then the greater the kinetic energy, which is shown with the green line with a mass of 3000 kilograms, velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, and kinetic energy of 1200 kilojoules. The opposite is true as well. 
the lower the velocity and the lower the mass. Then the lower the kinetic energy, which is shown by the blue line with a mass of 500 kilograms, velocity of 100 kilometers per hour, but only a kinetic energy of 200 kilojoules. Both scenarios demonstrate direct relationships between velocity, kinetic energy, and mass. As one goes up, so do the others. And as one goes down, so do the others. Now let's take a look at the relationship between potential energy, mass, gravity, and height. In the following diagram, it shows a 10 kilogram mass and a 20 kilogram mass being held five meters above the ground. It is shown that the 20 kilogram mass has more potential energy than the 10 kilogram mass. This easily demonstrates that the relationship between potential energy and mass is that the more mass there is, then the more potential energy there is. The less mass there is, then the less potential energy there is. This is another example of a direct relationship. As one increases or decreases, so does the other. Let's take a look at this diagram. The 10 kilogram mass on the left is held five meters above the ground, while the 10 kilogram mass on the right is held three meters above the ground. It is shown in this demonstration that the more height an object has above the ground, then the more potential energy it has. The lower the height of an object above the ground, then the less or lower potential energy it has. This shows that the relationship between potential energy and height are direct. As height increases, potential energy increases. As height decreases, potential energy decreases as well. So now let's put it all together. The relationship between potential energy, mass, gravity, and height. Look at the following diagram. It shows a formula for potential energy, which is mass times gravity times height. This means that the more mass and the more height an object has above the Earth, then the greater the gravitational potential energy because of the pull of gravity on the object back to Earth. Let's make it even simpler. Quick question. Would you rather be hit on the head with a tennis ball falling from two feet above your head or a tennis ball falling from 50 feet above your head? Pause the video and take two minutes to write and explain your answer. And that's our video for today. Now it's session now to see how proficient you are with analyzing and interpreting data to create graphical displays that illustrate the relationships of kinetic energy to mass and speed and potential energy to mass and height of an object by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results in your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better, better keep, keep going because it's not over until it. you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace, and have a positive, productive day. Mr. Laurie, I never trust a beautiful woman, especially one who's interested in you.